Welcome back. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins. This is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry. I'm so glad you decided to join me because I'm doing a series called Freedom in Christ and the Kingdom of Heaven. Yes, we are talking about the rapture. This is part two of the rapture. I don't know what information you have about it. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to say you need to just change your mind about the rapture and what you learned about it. Nope. I'm just going to lay it all out before you so that you can make your own choices, whether you have to change your mind about the rapture or whether you're learning about it for the first time. I hope you join me. It's not going to be no more than 20 minutes, 22 minutes. You got a few minutes to stay with me and study with me or else I'd be here all by myself. But I'm graciously thanking you for joining me. If you will stay, why don't we invite the Holy Spirit? We're going to pick up where we left off, how this is lived out. We know he's coming back. So how do we live this out? We know he's returning for our holy people. How do we live that out daily? There's not a lot of instruction people give you in your newspaper on how to prepare for the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> no, you won't find it there. And you won't find it on the internet. Well, you might find a couple of sites talking about the kingdom of heaven. But we're talking about how do you live? How do you prepare yourself knowing that he could come back any minute? Are you working for my Lord? Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, you could come back any minute. Oh, Lord, you're, you could require our very lives in a moment of time. God, I just pray for every listener. I pray that you meet their needs to hear and learn more about Jesus. I pray that you correct their thinking if it's faulty, Lord, if it's based on doctrine, but not real experience of who Christ is in their personal life. Oh, Father, I pray that you would bring them to an understanding that Jesus is real, he is the Son of God, and he is returning to earth. Lord, be with us in this study time. Again, meet every need of my listener. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Yes, Lord is coming back, and how do we live? If you knew your mom and dad was coming back from their trip or their afternoon away, and you left the cookies out and the flour out, and you didn't clean, the, clean up your space, You'd be hurrying, right? Getting ready because they called you and says, we're on our way back. You'd be cleaning up and getting ready. Well, I'm trying to avoid that hurry and that rush. You might omit something. You might leave something in your soul thinking that it didn't matter. This is how you live it out daily. You daily walk before him. You daily confess your sins before him. You daily engage with God. You daily commune with him. You daily let him know what your need is. You daily thank him for what he has done for you. Yes, so that when the call comes, we're going home and go like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> your mom and dad said, okay, we're coming now. You'll be like, all right, everything's all clean. Everything's all ready. So that's what we're going to talk about how this is lived out. We talked about briefly um, um, uh, church without spot or wrinkle, what this means to me. He's coming for a holy people. We talked about a people walking not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, which is love. We talked about a people called by his name. Remember the scripture says, my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, call upon his name, <clears throat> and he promises they will hear from heaven and he will heal their land. That's what he promises. And then it says that we are the bride. We are his bride. We are his church. She prepares herself for her wedding day. That's right. He's coming back. We're his bride. We're going to prepare ourselves for our wedding day. Yes, sir. So now, how this is lived out. We have another scripture we're going to talk about. It's called 2 Peter 3, 1 to 15. 2 Peter, you read all of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 15, and I'm going to go slow. And this is called the day of the Lord is coming. I'm going to go slow for my new listener. Here we go. This is my second letter to you, my dear friends. This is how the Bible talks. And in both of them, I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. He says, I want you to remember what the Holy Prophet said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own desires. Warning number one, they will say what happened to the promise 
that Jesus is coming again. And I know you hear that. They say, he ain't coming. They made that up. They're hoping he comes. They don't have nothing else to look forward to. So they're pining and they're thinking about Jesus, thinking that he's going to come. I heard that when he rose from the dead, he went to heaven. Like most people died, they go to heaven, they go up, and they don't come back. Well, I know. Paul said it was going to happen. He says, they will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. Hmm. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens by the word of his command, and he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. And then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. This is not my commentary. The Bible says the present world, the present earth has been stored up for fire. Let me go on. He says, they are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. That is verse 7. You don't think that is coming? The Bible says it is. You try not to believe it, but the Bible is going to happen anyway. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to happen anyway. Whether you say, oh, that snowstorm is coming. Yeah, I don't believe it. Every time they say it's snowing and then it just dusts. You better get some ice. You're shoveling your ice. You better get some, some um, salt for your driveway. You better get some extra water. This storm is coming. Beloved, the end is coming and you need to be prepared. I'm not talking about some soups, cans. I'm not talking about get, building a shelter place. No. Beloved, I'm not talking about that kind of preparing. I'm talking about your soul. I'm talking about your mind. I'm talking about the fruit that you want to bring before the Lord. He says, they are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. He says, but you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. He's talking to you and me. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord. And a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some people think, oh, he ain't coming. They've been saying that for years he's coming. They've been saying that before this century he's coming. Oh, I don't know why they keep saying it, but he ain't here. That's what they say. He says, no, he is being patient for your sake. That's why he's not here yet. There's listeners listening to this today. He's being patient for your sake, your family's sake, your cousin's sake, your brother's sake, your nephew's sake, your mom and dad's sake, your grandparents' sake, your neighbor's sake. He ain't back yet because he knows that if they don't hear the word of God, they're going to be destroyed by fire. They're not going to make it in unless they receive the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. They're not going to know the kingdom of heaven. So God is being patient with us. Next verse. He does not want anyone to be destroyed. God is in will that no man would perish, but that all would come to him. He said, but wants everyone to repent. There it is. There's God's will. You can refuse this. You can deny this. Or you can accept it and repent and make sure that you are in the kingdom of heaven. Or you can go on like everybody else. Eh, Mom and dad will be back. I'm not worried about it. Mom and dad, they've been gone four hours now. I think they got a hotel. They're spending the night. Guess the next thing you hear, kids, I'm home. Yeah, and a surprise. That's exactly how it's going to be. He says, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Hmm? Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. This is the most descriptive verse you will get, but you need to read this yourself. He says, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. That means the hard things that you work for. That means that 
whatever you built is gone, whatever you stored money up for, wherever you thought it was nobody was going to ever see this, whatever you might have thought that you were going to use one day, you hid it. Maybe you thought you were going to um, sell it one day. It's so precious to you. It's gone. Fire took it away. Fire is going to take it away. Beloved, you're not building your life on those things no more. You're not turning toward those material things that are going to be burned up by fire. He says, since everything around this is going to be destroyed like this, this is not my commentary. These are not my notes. He says, what holy and godly lives you should live, holy in the spirit, godly as unto the Lord. He's trying to tell you, you're making a choice. Your stuff's going to burn like fire. Unless, unless you are building the kingdom of heaven and the principles of the kingdom of heaven are love and you are leaving here. That's pretty much it. You got your lift off, you're leaving here because you're building the holy kingdom. You're building people to know Christ. You're bringing them to know Christ. He says, he says, what holy and godly lives you should live. Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. Are you looking forward to the day of his return? Beloved, your mom and dad are coming. You're excited. You haven't seen them a few days. They went off on holiday. They're back again. You want to tell them all the good news. You got an A on your paper. Yes, that's what he's talking about. But if your mom and dad is coming back and you got a zero and you're flunking out, you don't want to see him. Beloved, sin is going to make you flunk out. Sin is going to make you flunk out. You know your mom and dad are not going to be happy when they hear that you flunked out, when they hear you got a zero, when they hear that you got in trouble. They're not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy to see them either. People who don't want to see the Lord is because they know they messed up. Yes, people are going to see the Lord. They're going to like, oh man, he, uh, yeah, oh my God, he's coming back. Yeah, just like your parents when they tell you they're on the way and you got to show them that you got a letter from your teacher that you flunked that class. You're not happy about seeing your mom and dad just the way people are not going to be happy about seeing the Lord when he returns, but only worse, worse, beloved worse. It's going to be a worse day. He says, on that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to a new heavens. Born again, us believers and a new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. He says, last verse. So dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Beloved, we got a choice to make today. I read it to you. This is what's coming. This is not my commentary. I read what's coming. You got to choose whether you're going to build on material things that's going up in smoke. What a waste of time. Or you're going to start to build your lives on helping people learn about Christ, which is eternal, which never ends. Your life with him never ends. Your love for God never ends. And God's love for you never ends. If you build your life on this world and these principles, I read it to you. They're going to end. It's over. What a waste of time. What a waste of 30 years. What a waste of 40 years. What a waste for you to put your energies into something. It's going to burn. It's kind of like saying, honey, why don't we just have some eggs and some bacon and some tea and, and enjoy the night? Yeah. And then she just goes, makes it. And then all of a sudden it burns. You go like, well, that was a waste of money. <laughs> That was a waste, right? It's on fire. You put your effort into it. She scrambled them eggs and put the cheese in it and put the milk in it and made it nice and put the toast on and cooked the bacon just right. And next thing you know, she leaves it on too long and it burns. It burns. It's a waste. He's trying to tell you your efforts that you're putting into this world is going to be wasted by fire tested by fire, melted, the, the, the material is going to melt and burn. Oh, beloved, this is not an easy day. For, this is not going to be an easy study, but please stay with me. Don't go away. Stay with the whole tape. You must understand that these things are going to happen whether you believe it or not.
Okay, let's do another one. 2 Corinthians 5, 10 to 11. This is called, we prepare ourselves. We prepare ourselves, how this is lived out, how this is lived out, knowing that he is coming back again. Here we go. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 to 11. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. How do we live this out? Knowing he's coming back, we please him. How do we live this out? Knowing that he's going to come back with a, with a fervent heat with him, we please him day by day. What do you do with your day? You're pleasing him. What do you do with your time? You're finding ways to make the Lord blessed. You bless the Lord by your behavior. What's the next verse? For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. Yeah. Our works will be burned up. Our, our, our comfort of seeing him will be ruined because we are afraid, we're frightened, we messed up, we didn't do what he said. He's cracking the sky. The scripture says rocks fall on us. People will seek death, but they can't find it. Beloved, it's going to be a horrible day. Scripture says don't pray for the day of the Lord because it's going to be a terrible day. You know, Lord, come, Lord, come. He said, no, don't do that because there are going to be some people caught in their sin. And the judgment comes right in that moment. Listen, for we must all stand before the Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. There it is. How do we live this out? Knowing that he's coming back. One, we please him. Yes. And how we please him, how pleased he is with us will determine our reward. That's the best way to put it. How pleased he is with us will determine our reward. Okay. Let's do another one. Matthew 24 verse 30. This is this is how we live this out. One, we please him. Let's go. He says, and then at last the sign that the son of man is coming will appear in the heavens. Here we go. And there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth. Deep mourning. I would like to say running, holding our heads and screaming. That's the image that I get. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Some are going to see it. Yeah, he says. And he will send out his angels and with mighty blast of a trumpet, and they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest end of the earth and heaven. <laughs> yeah, that's the rapture. There's another verse referring to the rapture. We know that if you're two, to get, two together, one will be taken. He's trying to tell you he's coming back. This series is about the rapture. I proved that to you he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming back with fire. I proved that to you. True? Now he says he's coming back and he's going to gather his chosen ones. You got to be one of his chosen ones because you chose him and then he chose you. <laughs> yes, he chose us from the foundation of the world to be with him. And then the next verse, he says, now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. It's trying to tell you there's a sign. In the same way, when you see all these things, you will know his return is very near, right at the door. Beloved, there's a lot of signs around you today. I tell you the truth. This generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear. I, I warned you that. We said that in the other verse. The Bible's repeating it again. It says, heaven and earth as you and I know it will disappear. But my words, but out my, but out my words will never cease. But his words will not cease. God has spoken it. It will return back to him with everything that he said it's going to do. And he said if it's fire, then it's going to be fire. He says, however, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the son himself. Only the father knows. So this is what we can understand. Beloved one, he's coming back. 
Two, we have to be ready. Three, we are pleasing him and not in our flesh. Four, we know that he's coming back and he's going to take his chosen ones with him. See, this is it. I mean, I could close the tape right here and end it. That's the whole series. That's the gospel. That's why we preach the gospel. Why are they preaching about Jesus? Because he's coming back. Why are they preaching about Jesus? Because the world's going to end in fire. Why are they preaching about Jesus? Because God's good, God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Why are they preaching about Jesus? Because the world's going to end and anything that you're having is going to end and you're going to be burned up with them unless you come to Christ now. That's the gospel. I mean... I couldn't lay it out anymore. That's why we preach Christ and him crucified. That's why we try to tell as many people as we can, because if they're left behind, we read, we read, they're going to not lift. They're going to stay behind and everything on the earth will be destroyed. Beloved, I hope you got that. I hope it's clear that you could interpret that. If you can't exactly say it that way, then send this off to somebody. Send it to an enemy. Yeah. Make an enemy really mad at you. Share this with somebody that needs to know that they had doubts whether he's coming back. Show them in this scripture. Show them in this video that he is coming back. And if they are not a part of him, if they don't believe in Jesus Christ, then there's only fire left. Whether they believe it or not, God's word we read is not going to return unto his void, return unto him void. It's going to produce what he said. Here we go. Matthew 24, verse 24. You read the whole chapter 24. I'm going to read just three. Chapter verse three. And he says, Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. He's talking to us today. For many will come in my name, claiming I'm the Messiah. They will deceive many. Yep. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. What did we read the end was going to come? He was going to return on earth. The angel was going to blast his trumpet, and those that are with him are going to lift up. So fake messiahs can't do all that. <laughs> fake messiah will be running around saying, come to my conference. I'm over here. You're going to be really cool. They're going to do a couple of um, things that going to press you. But unless that sky cracks, unless you hear that trumpet, it. Everybody is false. Don't follow them. They can't do it. He says, yes, these things must take place, but the end will not follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation. We doing that. Kingdoms against kingdom. We're in that. There will be famines and earthquakes is happening today. Many parts of the world, but this is only the first of the birth pains, which more to come. He's lining it up. He's letting you know these are the signs. Remember he said like the object, like the um, fig tree, when you see the leaves, you know pretty soon the fruit is coming. He says here, then you will be arrested and persecuted and killed. Beloved, they will come after us. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, they will threaten us to make us bow down, to make us submit to that rule. We can't. We believe Jesus. He's Lord. We can't take it. We can't take the number. We can't take that branding that they want to give us. We cannot do it. Why? Because we are children of the living God. He says, you will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. See that? He said, Jesus also said, they hate you without a cause. I'm closing. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. They're going to be too scared to follow Jesus. He says, and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of money, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures, beloved, listen, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. There you go, beloved. He said, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. Beloved, I'm closing. You heard it here. That was a lot. That's a lot to digest. Take your time. Read it again. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins. The end is coming. He said so. I read it to you. This is not fake news, beloved. This is not my commentary. This is the word of God. How do we live this out daily? We please the living God. Beloved, come on back. We got more to talk about. How do we live this out? Knowing that he's going to return. Our master is going to return. And we want to be ready when he comes.